Welcome to Grammar 5D. In this booklet, we're going to go over past participles. We are going to review a little bit about prepositional phrases. And then we're going to diagram with past participles. So we're just going to jump right into the new material, past participles. So let's open up that book to the front and side cover, and we're going to look at the explanation together. Um, the first part of this is explaining what a verbal is. Now this may be the first time you're seeing this word, but it's not going to be the first time you've interacted with a verbal. Um, so let's go through this. Verbals are words or phrases that are a verb, but act like another part of speech. So they could be a noun, they could be an adjective, they could be an adverb. I'm hoping this sounds familiar because you've already interacted with a type of verbal, um, infinitives. Infinitives are verbs that function like a different part of speech. So today we're going to go over another type of verbal called a past participle. Past participles will also look familiar to you um, because they were used as the perfect form in grammar four. That's what we used as the main verbs when we were using perfect form. But it's important to note that these verbals are going to be acting like adjectives. So they can be in the perfect form as a main verb. They can also be adjectives modifying nouns. So let's look at one example first. Aaron only drinks filtered water. Notice how in this sentence, filtered is modifying the type of water. It's not an action being completed by Aaron. Instead, it's a modifier for a noun. So it's important to realize that this part, past participle can function as an adjective like we just learned. So let's look at the difference between a past participle versus a main verb, um, sorry, a past participle as a main verb versus an adjective. So here we have Justin had burned the toast. What action is being completed by Justin? Um, the action of burning and toast is receiving that action. It's not being described by burned, it's receiving the action of burned. Even though that is a past participle, in this form it is a, a main verb in the perfect form. So now let's look at that same verb being used as an adjective. Justin will eat burned toast. In this instance, Justin is completing the action of eating, not burning, and then also burned is uh, modifying the type of toast that Justin is going to eat. So notice the difference between that, and we're gonna work with that with a few other sentences. So here we have three sentences. Pickled cucumbers are delicious. Pat had delivered the tailored shirt. And the tired woman has drunk coffee. Let's look at that first sentence. Pickled cucumbers are delicious. We know our subject is cucumbers, and we know that it is being modified by pickled. That's telling us the type of cucumber that is delicious. So we are circling it and drawing an arrow to the modified word. So we essentially treat it like any other adjective that we would see in a sentence. So now we're just going to identify the other parts of this sentence. Are is our verb, and then delicious is another adjective but it's in the predicate, modifying the subject, so we just label it as a PA. So notice how pickled is not a verb in this sentence. It's not an action being completed by anything or anyone. It's just modifying the type of cucumber. So now let's look at another one. Pat had delivered the tailored shirt. So Pat is our subject. What is Pat doing? He's delivering, or he had delivered. So I'm going to double underline that. Notice how we have delivered as our main verb. It is a past participle, but it's not describing anything. It's just an action being completed by our subject. So now we have the rest of our sentence, the tailored shirt. Shirt is the thing being delivered. It is receiving the action of being delivered. So I'm going to label that as my DO. And then what kind of shirt is it? It's a tailored shirt. It's a modifier in this sentence tailored, the past participle. Um, so it's not an action being completed. Instead, it is just a modifier. And one last one, just to drive it home, the tired woman has drunk coffee. Woman is our subject. 
what is she doing? She has drunk. And what is receiving that action of being drunk? It's going to be coffee, which is our direct object. And so now we have tired, and that is also going to be a modifier in this one. It's our past participle, and it's telling us what type of woman it is. She's tired. She's ready for bed, but she just had some coffee, so now she's ready to go. So notice how we still have that past participle as our main verb, and it's right next to another noun, but it's not modifying that noun, right? It's the action being completed by the woman, by our subject. So make sure you're watching out for main verb versus um, past participle as an adjective. All right, so now we're going to go back into prepositional phrases, which we have learned a lot about. We've really expanded on that topic. So let's just review that really quick. We know that prepositional phrases can describe nouns and verbs. Remember, an adverbial prepositional phrase describes the action of the verb or the state of being if you have a linking verb. So let's look at a basic example from our explanation page at the front of the book. The cat is playing with yarn. With yarn is modifying how the cat is playing. It answers a question about the verb. Notice that prepositional phrases could answer questions about the modified noun, but the prepositional phrase modifying a verb is going to answer how, when, or where the action occurs. So let's look at a sentence with both an adjectival and adverbial phrase. The creek by my house flows through the forest. By my house is modifying creek. It's telling me where the house is. I'm sorry, where the creek is. <laughs> and then flows through the forest is telling us where the action is taking place, through the forest. So now let's look at one more sentence before we get into our diagramming. So here we have a sentence, the building in the center of town stands among stores and a park. So first, I am going to recommend that we cross out all of our prepositional phrases so we can find our subject and verb a little easily or a little bit more easier. Um, so here I'm going to start um, crossing them out in the center of town among stores and a park. Remember, prepositional phrases start with a preposition, end with a noun or pronoun. And sometimes you can have one or more noun or pro one or more um, noun or pronoun as your object of uh, the preposition. So now we have just a very basic sentence without our prepositional phrases, which is the building stands. And so we know that building is our subject and stands is our verb. And now we can start to think about what these um, prepositional phrases are doing in this sentence. We'll start with the first one first, the building in the center of town. So, excuse me, in the center is modifying where the building is, meaning it's acting like an adjective. So I'm going to change that to the other type of blue that we use for adjectives, and I'm going to circle it and draw an arrow to the modified word. And then of town is going to be another modifier. But what is it modifying? Is it telling us where the building is um, as well? or is it modifying something else? The way to figure that out is you say that prepositional phrase right after you, uh, the noun you think it might be modifying. So in other words, the building of town. It doesn't really make sense. It's not modifying building. The building and the center of town. Well, of town makes a whole lot more sense modifying center. That's going to be where we're going to draw our arrow. So I circled it. And I drew that arrow. And then lastly, we have among stores and a park. We know that it's not modifying building. Um, in this instance, it's telling us where it is standing. And so we're going to circle it and draw an arrow. So now that we have these prepositional phrases, uh, hopefully a review, like I said, uh, you feel a little bit more confident about these different types of phrases. It's so important for you to really look at these phrases and how they interact with the words in the sentence. And don't forget that we may have past participles within prepositional phrases, which is what we're going to look at 
with a sentence diagram. So let's jump right in. The gallery has presented landscapes with painted pottery. So I'm going to cross out my prepositional phrase just to get started. And then I'm going to identify my subject and my verb. My subject is gallery. And what is the gallery doing? It has presented. Notice we've got that past participle as our main verb. And that's what it's doing. It is a verb in this sentence. It's not modifying anything. We have a modifier in V, which is modifying the gallery. And then landscapes is the direct object. It's the thing that is receiving the action of the verb. And then with painted pottery, what is that modifying? Well, it's not modifying landscapes. The landscapes don't have painted pottery in them. It's a landscape. It's going to be just rolling hills and beautiful things like that. Instead, with painted pottery is telling us how the landscapes are presented, how the action of presenting is occurring. So I'm going to circle it and draw an arrow to the main verb. Notice I'm also going to identify our OP, which is pottery, and painted is modifying pottery. Here we have another past participle. In this instance, it's not a verb. It's not an action being completed. Instead, it's a modifier. It's an adjective modifying pottery. It's what type of pottery we have. So now we can start making our um, diagram. We're going to start with one long line intersected with a shorter long line. Um, and then we are going to have another little half line. So we're separating out our subject, predicate, and direct object. And now we're going to put in our modifiers, which is going to be one for the subject. And then we have a prepositional phrase for our verb. So I'm going to make that little set of lines. And then we have a modifier for our OP. But it's not just any type of modifier. It's a past participle. So we treat it a little bit differently when we diagram. Instead of just drawing one diagonal line like we did for V that would go under gallery, this one's going to be a curved line. And this is just a way for us to differentiate between a past participle and all the other type of adjectives that we have, like articles and descriptors, demonstratives, indefinites, etc., all the things you've already learned. So just make sure that when you're making your own diagrams that you're differentiating between a past participle and every other type of adjective. So now we can figure it out and um, fill it in. We can put in our subject, our verb phrase, and we can put in our direct object. Gallery has presented landscapes. That is the core of our sentence. Everything else is just giving us more information about it. So I can put in the modifying gallery and then our prepositional phrase with pottery. What type of pottery? Painted. Notice how I tried to curve the word painted. Um, if you can, try to do that in your book, but really if you want to just draw it straight, that's fine. It's more important that the line is curved than your words are curved on that line. Um, and then the last thing I want to point out is something that I pointed out in the previous book as well, is that with painted pottery, that is an entity within itself. That phrase, even though it's made up of these composite parts, we have a preposition, we have an OP, and we have an adjective, the whole phrase itself acts like an adverb, modifying our verb. So make sure you identify the function of the phrase as well as the functions of the parts of speech within the phrase. So with all that being said, that will be how you um, diagram this sentence. And if you have any other questions about grammar, please contact the owner of your Gideon Center.